himself, even uh, Zach.
Hey, what's up everybody? How we doing tonight? Hey, there's already a crowd in here. How you doing tonight, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday. Happy Torgal Tuesday, as I see in the chat. What is up? Let's see who we got here tonight. Some dude, what's up? Woo, the prodigal prof returns. Uh, the thankful prof. Because prof's been giving thanks. It's giving thanks. <laughs> it's been 84 years. Hmm. What's up, lady? A... Late lecture night this week, it feels. Hey, y'all. Yeah, we're just an hour late. So I mentioned this in Discord. Like, I had a meeting at 7, uh, 6.30 my time. So I had to bump it back a little bit. But, hey, better late than never. And we got some good stuff tonight. So, yeah. Hey, Leon, thank you for the sub. Yes, sir. I uh, have to check that out. Yep. Uh, so just posted your own mini theory today about the lyrics of Hymn of the Penitent. Yeah. Well, we're not going to get there tonight, but soon. So it's going to be great when we do get to that. Uh, let's see. Who else we got in here in the chat? Um, Vanilla. What's up? King St. Michael. What's up? How we doing? King St. Mike, King St. Michael, thank you for the sub. Oh my gosh, thank you, sir. That's, that was from one of my first streams ever. Thank you, sir. I, you finally finished Final Fantasy 16. It was amazing. Oh yeah, it is amazing. It is amazing. Now you can go back and watch all of my old lecture streams so you can really understand the story of Final Fantasy 16. Also, it's a very exciting night. Let me tell you why it's a very exciting night. If you've been following me on Twitter or if you've been watching in the Discord tonight, you guys, uh, your boy got upgraded internet. Apparently, my internet was being connected through a uh, faulty or slow outlet. I don't know anything about it, but y'all, it's so fast. Now, if it drops, then karma... Karma is the worst, right? So, um, speaking of karma, how was Tay Tay Taylor Swift? She was awesome. So, everybody, here's the story. My mom, um, in an effort to try to get me and uh, my brother and other family members to kind of stay in town a little longer and to um, just spend quality family time together, she bought our entire family tickets to the Taylor Swift Eras movie concert. So I went to that on Friday night. And y'all, it was actually pretty good. It was actually pretty good. I was not excited. So then it was good. Uh, yeah, my mom does know how to work it. Let me tell you a little bit about my mom. Mom knocked us. Um, she... Uh, She's part of this cult of a gym. Now, I'm part of a cult of a gym, but we call it CrossFit. You kind of expect that. But my mom's part of a cult of a gym called Lifetime Fitness. Um, TM. And uh, she's in this Zumba group. And uh, in, in Mama Knox's Zumba group, they love to dance. That's like what they do. Then they go out to eat all the time. But um, she and her Zumba friends... They will fly all over the world to go see Bruno Mars. And not just that. They will get custom t-shirts that are about um, about uh, Bruno Mars or whatever song. I can't even name one of his songs. Like, what is that? 24 Karat? I, I don't even I, I don't even know. Um, anyway, they go and they like flash mob. Like, at, at the concert. At one time they were in Nashville. Tennessee and they went into a bar my mom doesn't drink she goes into a bar and she and her Zumba friends started like a flash mob like this woman is like old enough to be my mom right so she she's like in her early 60s and she does this I like it's it's amazing as a former Zumba participator whoa Lynn you're you're a Zumba a Zumbite that is like a religious cult it's like the, the Circle of Malleus, which we'll learn a little bit about tonight. You can confirm this. That's awesome. Prof's response uh, sounds exactly like you after seeing the FNAF movie. Yeah. Hey, Five Nights at Freddy's, pretty good movie. I liked it a lot. Prof, mom. Yeah. 
I'm going to tell my mom that you say that she knows how to work it. The evil Comcast has been defeated. Karuai, here's the thing. Comcast came through. I, I know I throw a lot of crap and a lot of shade at them. But, uh, yeah, they... Listen, Comcast came through. And now, if if this thing falls apart, then I'm calling Comcast, giving them a uh, Prof Noctis limit break. Um, but it is... Right now, it's pretty solid, so we're going to see, we're going to see, we're going to see. What's up, sub? How you doing? A free FF16 class in this economy? What can I say? It's the season of giving. Thanksgiving and a holiday. The holiday spirits come over me. That's a Cyber Monday deal. deal. It's Giving Tuesday, everybody, and I'm giving you a free lecture tonight. So, Generous Noctis. Uh, Racy, what's up? First of all, uh, that's a Cyber Monday deal. Uh, my mom sounds cool. My mom is cool. My mom's way cooler than me. So, anyway, there's, there's that. Um, I may need to step away. No, no, no. I've got a cord. I knew I unplugged some things the other day for my internet people. But I've got to plug up my, uh, my PlayStation controller really quick. This is professional. A professional streamer right here. Most people get this stuff done off camera. Not me. Not me. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. You get to see the real life of professional prof doctors. Oh, man. Generous, humble, and modest. Those are three words that I would use to describe myself. <laughs> it's, it's like in the, the Old Testament. when um, In the books of Moses, um, it says, Now Moses died. And Moses was the most humble man that ever lived. And he's also accredited with writing those things. And I don't have a problem with Moses being called the most humble man that ever lived. Except if he said it, right? That then it's like, well, I, I, hopefully he didn't write that about himself. It's kind of like the Apostle John in the Gospel of John in the New Testament. Where uh, he just throws, he, he has two things. Number one, he says, uh, number one, he says, that he's the beloved disciple, right? Which is great if he's not the one that's saying it. Number two, he like throws serious shade at Peter, who's already died by the point the Gospel of John is written. And he says, so Peter and the disciple Jesus loved himself, both ran to the tomb, but the disciple Jesus loved got there first. Basically saying he's a faster runner than Peter. And Peter can't even defend himself because he's dead at this point by the time that it's written. So that's some serious shade. Well, uh, you just watched Midnight Mass? Oh my gosh, Midnight Mass. What a what an incredible TV series. Incredible TV series. I wish Hoven was in here right now because that is so, so good. So, so good. Um, Hoven loves Midnight Mass. Uh, so when he gets in here, y'all bring it back up and he's, he's going to love it. Um, I love running, but you can't run anymore like you used to. Well, you still wouldn't be as fast as the Apostle John, apparently. So, uh, I love running. I do too. I just got some new shoes, um, to run in. This is just like a casual chatting stream at this point. We're just, we're just vibing. I've got my hot chocolate. Actually, it's like a peppermint mocha, Starbucks K-cup, cheap Noctis, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just got some new running shoes, but they gave me, uh, I wear a size nine. I got tiny feet, um, but they gave me a left shoe that was size nine and a right shoe that was size 11. I didn't realize it until I was halfway through a run in a workout. Good grief. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I was like, I looked like a clown show. I came back in because I was uh, in, in uh, I was staying with my mom uh, for Thanksgiving. I walked in. She said, are you wearing clown shoes? How do I not notice that? Well, listen, I, um, the problem, <laughs> the problem is when you get in the zone, it's called the runner's high and you get so high that you can't, um, you can't run. You, you don't notice things like that. Nothing like a tankard of white mocha cake up before heading out to fight monsters and God. Don't forget God. We're out to fight God tonight. Mansplaining a runner's high. Well, that's what it is. I, I understand, Racy, that you may not understand what a runner's high is. And it's when runners get high, you see. It helps them run fast. That's why they call them uppers, because it ups your, your pole position in the race. 
this 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 is gonna be a good stream, you guys. I feel it. I feel it tonight. This is gonna be a good one. <laughs> people people that tune into this on YouTube later on, they're gonna be like, <laughs> what? what's wrong with this guy? Is he a professor? Mm. Yeah. All right, everybody. I think that we've we've vamped enough. Runner's high is the best. What's up, your boy McCoy? How are you? Welcome to the chat. Kind of a tough question, but has anything particular stood out more in this deep dive and analytical playthrough than in other playthroughs? Hey, Sub, I just got to appreciate you for getting us on track, getting getting this train back going. Um, so, yeah. I was thinking about this over the course of uh, Thanksgiving, kind of having that uh, week-long break, and there are several things that have stood out to me more in this playthrough, um, especially as we've been talking in Discord and on these chats. And I think that the things that have stood out to me the most are the connections narrative-wise between the attributes of the divine being shown in the icons and the narrative biographies of the dominance that correspond with them that the trauma that they're each experiencing or the strengths and talents correspond to this divine image that each one of them bears. And uh, I'm seeing that a lot more this time. We had an amazing conversation about Barnabas last time and about his will versus, um, versus uh, Ultima's will and how he's almost caught up in this religious frenzy, this cult-like furor, which is uh, another amazing song, right? Uh, this cult-like furor of um, overcoming Clive and playing his part in this divine drama. I think that that's uh, actually a really amazing thing. What's up, supportive? Welcome. Reminds me of something the devs said at one point about how the characters can be seen even in their dominant icon forms. That's exactly it. That that's um, they can be seen big time. The, each one is telling the story of of their trauma. Titan is all about um, funneling power in manipulating things through strength. Um, and even in loss, what does he do? He uses strength. We see in um, in Garuda the grasping for control because her life is out of control. And so she's using, even in her own life, um, her body, her persuasion skills to try to control situations. And Garuda is, um, in this game, uh, not necessarily Hinduism, the goddess of control. Um, we see Sid um, as a person who is a provider um, of the hideaway. He's, he's um, uh, corresponding with this element or this attribute of divine provision. He's offering provision to people um, to die on their own terms and that becomes to live or die on their own terms and you see that in Rama who is a storm god and storm gods are gods of um, yes destruction but they're gods of provision more than anything um, hey thanks for the follow lady experiment thank you so much um, storm gods bring rain um, which uh, again waters the crops and the crops offer sustenance and so in times of drought uh, people, especially in desert, dry, drought-prone um, areas, are crying out to um, storm gods, deities that would offer rain. These are gods of um, fertility in many uh, respects. And so Rama is that, and he corresponds with Sid perfectly, um, I, I think. Um, we see Barnabas. Um, he is... Um, uh, we, we talked a lot about Barnabas last time. We talked about the idea of... Um, Barnabas being this incredibly holy, righteous um, uh, bearer, I guess, of, of this divine attribute, that he is the one that is bringing alignment to the righteousness of the divine. And so he's doing it through a series of, of rules, of laws. I would say Barnabas really corresponds with law. I had not quite made, to this degree, the connection with Barnabas and the lawbringer Moses in the Old Testament before. Of course, I mean, it's pretty blatant. I mean, he parts the sea at one point. But last stream, we really, really got into how Barnabas is serving a deity who um, wants the human will to conform to his own. And so he wants to turn everyone a Kashik, which essentially is a... Um, subjugation of will to the divine 
<coughs> excuse me. So super interesting stuff, all, all that to say. That's kind of a, re a review so far, I guess. Lady Experiment, first time catching a stream. Welcome! Welcome to class. So glad that you're here. Um, really, really glad. Yeah. And, and sub, to that same point, let me get a drink before I choke on my own words here. And this is the problem. So each one of these, and we're going to get into this tonight, actually. Oh my gosh. Mm. Muthos. Tonight we're talking about Muthos and Logos. All right? Just spoiler alert. And Muthos is the idea of all of these stories. All of these stories that each represent a different attribute of the divine. When I was in a class on, um, on worship and pietistic practices, the professor... Um, said, I want you to imagine that I'm holding up a jewel. This is so cool. He said, I want you to imagine I'm holding up a jewel. And from this angle, you can see all of the little indentations and the refractions in the light. But if I turn it ever so slightly, you see that the light will refract differently. And you're able to see different nuances, different angles, curves, and crevices that are in this jewel, Right? He said, this is the same way it is with religion, with denominations, with perspectives of the divine. Oftentimes, we don't turn that jewel, but we see one very specific perspective. And the task of the theologian is to turn that jewel to see the divine in a different light. And that's what this game does so stinking well. That's what really caught me about the philosophy of religion. You have the perspective of that jewel of the law. You have the perspective of that jewel of the divine of power, of love with Shiva and Jill, of, um, of, uh, of power with Titan, with provision, with Sid, of wrath, with Ifrit, we talked about that a little bit. I think that's so cool, right? And tonight kind of comes to a head. And so all of that with uh, as way of saying, let's go ahead and get this stream started. How about, we've talked a lot about running high and all that stuff. Uh, Barnabas is also the current leader of a religious group. Yeah, that's right. Mm, good stuff. Let's dive in. You're really taking me back to appropriately your theology classes in college. Hey, that's what we love. Not a very religious person anymore, but I went to a Catholic university and one of your theology classes was honestly one of your favorites. I love that. Really fascinating. And the priest was really knowledgeable on a lot of religions. I love that. I love that. I got to learn from some of the most amazing scholars at Emory University, at Asbury University, and at my undergrad at Birmingham Southern College in Alabama. And um, in each of these, I got to learn from under some of the best theologians. Um, uh, a guy that literally wrote the textbook on the New Testament, like the one that is still commonly used today. It's amazing stuff. And uh, this was some of the stuff that they taught us um, to, to regard and ask difficult questions of religious perspectives. One of the things that we talked about in this life, in fact, Nickel, uh, half Nickel on Twitter, and I talk about this a good deal, uh, both in stream and offline, there's a lot of damage that's done in religious communities, a lot of it, and it's justified in the name of God. And one of the things that this game does so beautifully is that it kind of answers for that. It's like, yeah, religious stuff can sometimes go way off the rails and a lot of people get hurt for it. But what are the things that we keep and what are the things that we throw out? That's what this game does great. All right, let's go kill some stuff. <laughs> that was a great transition, I know. You were right, Joshua. We're just going to leave it there. Hey, my dude. <laughs> you, you ain't lying, sub. Is there no peace for a dying man? What happened here? The ether floods made savage priests of my companions. <laughs> and those faithless orcs, I knew they weren't to be trusted. Hmm. We were told that they would stay loyal to our cause. Something. I love that, Sub. I'm glad. Well, you're in for a great stream. I make sure that you catch the ending, even if you got to leave before it, because we're going to get in some great stuff tonight. Perhaps they sensed our downfall. The king is gone. 
our nation in ruins. What becomes of us loyal pawns now? Sworn to a shattered throne. Fuck yeah. all that. <coughs> Fuck the dead king and his god. <coughs> Fuck this withered shithole. Bloods do not affect you. Mm. You are a bearer, albeit one has lost his brand. Pray, hear me, brother. <laughs> Will you grant this pawn his final wish? Will you lay my dying soul to rest? Hmm. God, this is a. Of course. What do you need? Hey, Jeffrey, how you doing? the castle walls towards stone here there is a forest never turn my parents are buried upon the bluff nestled amongst the trees theirs was the only love I ever knew hmm. I was torn from them in life but perhaps I can return to them in death take my ring See that it rests beside their bones. Yeah, God, that's powerful. May you find peace at last. Hmm. You know, I've had the honor of doing a number of funerals and working as a hospice chaplain years ago. And this this side quest feels so real to me it's the idea of regret of pain um and how do you deal with that at the end of your life how, how do you feel like your life can come to an end in a way that does it justice it didn't it, it wasn't for nothing and i think there's something beautiful and tragic about that because it is the question that that you know ultimately religious or not we're faced with did it matter did our lives count Don't and um me. He's got some pain, and it was pain inflicted on him in the name of religion. I mean, it was powerful stuff. Just as you surmise. There's an army down there, Joshua. Yes, but I don't see any dominance. <laughs> also, one of my favorite things in this entire game is right here in this field. Let's go see it. Well, let's kill some things. Uh, sub, yeah, I played through Endwalker. Yeah, I was a, um, I'm an old guard Final Fantasy 14 guy. Like, day one it released on the, um, on the, uh, PlayStation 3. Sorry, my battling is really off right now because I'm reading the chat. <laughs> you know what we're going to need? We're going to need some potions. Yeah, Endwalker was amazing. I had to, like, process Endwalker for days. Um, I played the entire final area of Endwalker in, um, in, uh, one night. I started it at, like, 8 p.m. and finished it, like, 4 a.m., 3 a.m. Just basically sobbed my way through the night. It was beautiful, and maybe it was exhaustion. Um... Travel past the twins. This side quest really opens up what to expect for the rest of the game. Yeah. What's my take on the Barnabas fight? Uh, actually disappointed by it. I have a little bit of disappointment to it. I love... It feels... It does feel lackluster compared to the uh, Bahamut fight, for sure. But, I mean, that's like peak Final Fantasy 16 there. I mean, I, I don't know if I can blame it for that. Um... But the Barnabas fight is one more of ideology um, than spectacle, and I do appreciate it for that. Yeah, Endwalker hit me deep in my soul, too. Those themes, oh my gosh. Just incredible. And, um, in fact, funny story. It was uh, three weeks later, I was in a, uh, a lecture, um, attending a lecture, um, a small group lecture among some... Um, other colleagues and professionals and they used 
the idea of um oh gosh what was it um what's the name of the flower i'm i'm forgetting the name of the flower because i'm trying to kill these hyenas um Intelecki, in Intelecki, uh, and, um, yeah, the Intelecki, um, the Elpis flower, yeah, but I'm specifically thinking of Medion and how they, um, have some of the same sort of, uh, things, but, uh, we were talking about the Greek understanding of Intelecki's, and, um, I was like, I have got a game that went into this, and so I kind of got to talk about it in the middle of that lecture, it was really cool.